Good morning from the United Nations Environment Program in Paris. My name is Garrett Clark, and I'm the Sustainable Lifestyles and Education Program Officer in the Economy Division. And it's a real pleasure to be here with you this morning. I'm going to thank and welcome all of you. Professor Kumar from the Asia Institute of Technology and other distinguished guests, AIT students and faculty, as well as young professionals in Asia. Allow me also to thank the Asia Institute of Technology for their support for today's event, as well as that of the European Commission. Now, my colleague, Dr. Memon, has asked me to offer a few introductory remarks about SDG 12, which we know is responsible consumption and production, sustainable lifestyles, and more in particular, in the area of food. Well, hmm, that's a challenging task and some opening remarks. So I'd like to translate that task into a few words around what sustainable living in a 1.5 context and how can we empower people to live better and lighter. And within that, I'll go into a bit more detail on, on some of the work UNEP is doing to translate the evidence and science into actions that people can take about how they're living to be more impactful. And of course, food is a huge area within how we live. Um, so within this COVID context, let me offer a few opening comments about that. We've all seen the references to the importance of putting people first, about people-centric approaches to how we build back better. And whether that's at the global, the regional, the national, the local levels. But actually, we've all seen this even within our homes. Google noted within confinement periods when most of the planet was affected that there was an increase in the search around the string of words for sustainable living of over 4,500%. Now imagine, that was just those words. If you expanded the words that would include how we live, which includes how we eat, how we move, how we study, how what we do to live our aspirations and be part of our community, our well-being, you can imagine the interest that this COVID context has brought about to that we're more people-centric. Now, the thing to think about is also that most people when they wake up in the morning don't think about the environment or sustainability. They don't think about hurting it, but not to help it either. In fact, even though there may be more people and a growing awareness around sustainability, and probably most people who are attending today's event are more engaged in this topic, the reality is that most people, when they wake up, they think more about how to meet their daily needs, their daily concerns. They think about what they need to eat, what they need to wear, getting dressed, getting their kids to school, getting to work. They make decisions about how they live and about health, health more now than ever. Now, they're living their lives and their aspirations as best they can for themselves as well as their families. And today, those challenges are even greater than ever. So in the remaining moments that I have, I'd like to share with you a few slides that highlight more what are sustainable lifestyles, what can be done about it, and in particular, some in the area of food. So allow me the technology of putting up my slides. <clears throat> All right, so when we think about what are sustainable lifestyles, here we have the overall expert's decision and, and definition on what are lifestyles. But again, referring to the way that I spoke earlier, we're talking about ways of living, our behaviors, the choices that we can make that will minimize our impacts. Now, sustainable living is new on the global agenda. It's appeared twice in the, in the sustainable development goals, but previous to that, there hadn't been a global mandate to take action, but now we have that action. So in looking at what the experts say, what are sustainable lifestyles? It's let's be clear that the evidence is clear that there is no one sustainable lifestyle, that the way one lives sustainably in Paris or Bangkok or Nairobi, and whether it's in an urban or rural setting will all vary. And even those who want to live more sustainably probably do not have the options that are affordable, accessible, effective, and probably most importantly, desirable. 
The evidence is growing, however, on what we can do in our daily lives to scale up positive impacts to live healthier, better, and lighter, and that's for everyone. But again, there is a critical role for governments and business to make sustainable living the default option. Now, highlighting here, what's also important to note is that with two to three billion new consumers coming online, and many will be urban youth who are setting today's consumption patterns and will be tomorrow's leaders, many of them get their information from social media. So we have to be clear in keeping that in mind as we come up with the evidence and figure out how best to effectively disseminate it. Now, shortly put, what is it that we know about food? Everyone can relate to it. We love it. It's part of our lives. It's how we survive, and it's also how we celebrate living. And this slide sums up some of the major issues. The dream that we have about what is food and what we want out of it is also alongside what the reality of it is. Aspirations, trends, and dietary changes and impacts all along global value chains waste, carbon impacts, and people's needs that are not being met in order to survive, and raising obesity and health impacts are all part of the picture. In a world that's stretched thin for resources in a COVID context, these challenges are magnifying. Now, as those who work in the sustainability sphere, which many of us are, we're probably familiar with looking at a life cycle approach to where are the impacts along the value chain for food. If you look at the bottom of this slide, it highlights the different points at which many of us may have had exposure or engagement on how impacts around food could be ad could be addressed. However, look at how the individual or within the use phase, how people think about food. They aren't able to affect all of the parts along the value chain. And when they think about how they're going to actually use it, their concerns are about what it looks like, how it tastes, what its cost is, is it fresh, is it something they're desiring, and their use will affect how it's purchased, how it's stored, preparation and consumption. So it's that intersection that's important in looking at sustainable lifestyles. Now, in order to help take some of the challenges and evidence that has been noted around food systems, UNIP has worked with experts across the globe to look at translating the evidence into what people can do about it. And here highlighted and known as the anatomy of action, the five major areas in which people make their decisions, their daily decisions and spend their resources, financial and otherwise, are around food, stuff, move, money and fun. And in looking at how this was developed, just to give you the broader context for the entire effort, you can see here that within that, the major elements for dealing with foods, food and its impacts are in three clear areas around protein swaps, using all of your food and growing your own. So in drilling down more into what is important around the food aspects, you can see here parts of this of the social media toolkit, the anatomy of action is, which highlights the social media assets, which are ways in which you can visualize and get attractive narrative components to promoting these three key areas, protein swaps, using all your food or reducing food waste and growing your own. And what's important to note is that with each of the areas highlighted of what we need to do are suggestions, options, real efforts that can be made and undertaken. Now, how has COVID changed the context we have around food? We've seen some initial reactions that food and sh food efforts are shifting to more home cooking, that people are buying more and are better on are ready to buy larger purchases, but looking at better quality, and that there's a strong concern for healthy diets. And there's a notice around that exotic purchases could be increased risks and hence there's more local purchasing however it's it's more um, hygienically cared for and packaged because of health concerns now what can be done at a systems level around food at a local level implementation here are some of the areas that are practical innovative creative ways in which communities and initiatives can look at reducing their protein swaps or increasing protein swaps using all the food that's there and growing their own.
Now, just as a final slide to give you a sense of some of the additional work that UNIP has done in this area, UNIP has translated the work of sustainable lifestyles in, um, in research as well as actions. And in addition to the anatomy of action, we've also looked at the good life goals, which is a translation of the SDGs in general. Now, before leaving, I just wanted to, to say these are only some introductory remarks around food and food systems. It's important to reference that the evidence and critical ways in which we can reduce our impacts on the planet, whether it's climate, biodiversity and nature, as well as other impacts are critical to take into account to how we prioritize the actions that we've had. And with these brief opening remarks, I'd like to thank you all again for having an opportunity to speak with you this morning and look forward and offer you a great success for today. Thank you, goodbye.